Okay guys, so to start off in the intro, we're going to be cycling around three chords, three major chords. We've got G major, we've got D major, and we've got C major. So instead of just cycling around the chords as we would normally, we're going to try and make things a bit more interesting and a bit more Hendrixy by incorporating the first inversion shape over each chord. So what the first inversion means, or what the first inversion is, is basically changing the root note of the chord to the major third in the scale of the chord. So we're going to change this G note for the first chord up to the seventh fret on the E string, so it's now a B note. And we're still keeping the bottom two the same. sliding that 3rd fret on the E string, I'm just going to change that up to that 7th fret, keep the 5s on the A and the D strings. We're going to do the same thing over the D chord, so exactly the same idea, we're just moving over to the root on the A string this time, sliding up to that ninth fret on the A string, using the 3rd finger. And then finally the C chord, exactly the same as the D, just sliding things down two frets. Same idea, sliding up to that seventh fret on the A string with the third finger. Then we've got the fifth frets on the D and the G. So once more back to the G. Over to D. And then down to C again. So once we've slid up to these first inversion shapes, it kind of leaves the fingers open to grab more notes in this position. So we're borrowing the fifth fret basically with the first finger. hammering on up to the seventh frets on the D, A and the E. Maybe add in some double stops, so we're going to strum two strings at the same time. Fifth frets on the D and the A string, hammering up to seven. I'm going to do the same thing over D. So I'm just borrowing the 7th fret with my 1st finger, hammering up to the, to the ninth fret on the G there, keeping that 7th fret B ringing out. Going down to C, exactly the same thing. Back to G. So the intro in my version just basically utilizes that whole idea, just cycling up to the inversion shapes in each chord and then messing around with the notes in that area. Just to create something a bit more interesting and a bit more Hendrixy. So starting off in the intro, we're gonna start with a G chord. A little variation on G major, we're gonna hold down the third fret with a thumb on the E string. We're going to hold down the 5th fret on the D with the 3rd finger. So we're missing out that A string. We want that A string muted with the tip of the thumb. So the thumb's just coming over and resting over that A string, not pressing down. Holding down that 5th fret on the D with the 3rd finger. We're going to leave the G open. And then we're going to bar the 3rd fret on the B and the E at the bottom with the 1st finger. Strum right through. I'm just going to be picking the top three strings. Moving over to the D chord, the second chord, we're going to slide straight up into our first inversion. 
So we're going to aim for that ninth fret on the A string, sliding straight up with the third finger. And we're just going to we're going to pick right through that the D major first inversion. And then we're adding in some extra notes in that first inversion shape. So we're barring the seventh fret with the first finger, hammering on up to the ninth fret on the G, back down to the seven, same thing on the D, up to nine on the D. Following the D chord, we're going down to our C major first inversion and to introduce this chord we're going to hammer 5 up to 7 on the A string so we're hammering on up to that major third note of C then we're going to catch that first inversion shape and we're going to make sure the first finger is ready to grab the fifth frets on the D and the G so as soon as I'm finished with the hammer on up to the seventh fret First thing that's coming on over to that fifth fret on the D and the G, and then just plucking down. And we're just arpeggiating that first inversion shape just by picking notes, holding down the chord and picking notes with the picking hand. finish on that first C, 5 to 7 on the A string, back to that 7th fret, moving over to the G and the B with the 5th fret, 5th fret bar on the G and the B, so we're just repeating the same kind of patterns over each inversion shape. First section we're going to go back to the G chord, back to that G chord shape that we started with. Same type of thing over that second G chord, sliding back up to our D, first inversion shape again. Back down to C. So the second time on C we're going to change things up a bit. So we're still in the first inversion shape, 5 to 7 on the A string. We're just going to change that a bit slightly there. We're going to hold down the 5th frets on the D and the G. 7th fret D with the 3rd finger up to the 8th fret. So we're going to, we're going to stretch up to that 8th fret with the 3rd finger. Still holding down that 5th fret on the D and the G. Back down to 7. And then back down to 5. Coming down to that 7th fret on the A string. Back to 5 on the D. 7 on the D and then slide up to 9 with a 3rd finger. grab this G chord variation, taken from the C shape of a G chord, so it's just the D, G and B strings that we want, and we've got 9th fret on the D, 7th fret on the G, and then 8th fret on the B. So that second section.
So over the third cycle of the chords, we're now in this new G major position shape. So we're just going to pluck the individual strings to arpeggiate the chord. Moving over to D again. First inversion shape, 7 up to 9 on the A string. Same type of thing, hammering up to 9th frets on the G and the D. Back down to C. Back up to G again. In this higher position variation of the chord. The last time we're going to play G in the intro section, we're going to we're going to hammer on up to the 10th fret on the B string. So we're holding down the 8th fret on the B with the middle finger, and you're going to hammer on up to the 10th with your pinky, all while holding that G chord down. And then just plucking back up the chord. Back to our D variation. And the final time we're going to play D, we're going to do the same thing that we did over that C chord in the third run through. So we've got that third finger stretch up to the 10th fret on the D. Straight back down to that 7th fret on the D and the G. And then to introduce the C chord, we're going to go 9, 10 on the A string. And then come around with a thumb on the 8th fret on the E. Final C chord, we've got this C sus shape, which is the 10th fret on the D string, 7th fret on the G, and then 8th fret on the B. We've got a double stop here, we're going to hammer on 7 up to 9 on the G. So the full intro section all together. So once you've got a grips with sliding up to the first inversion shapes over each chord, you can add in your own kind of hammer on and pull offs, your own embellishments just to keep things interesting and kind of put your own stamp on things. Most of the time if I come back to play the song, I probably won't play things the same as I did the first time. I think that's the nature of this kind of guitar style, it's you, you don't really need to have everything note for note every single time. Things are kind of left open for you to put your own stamp on things. Try and be as creative as you can using these ideas and then branch off into your own things. So try and use those tools to make your own thing and just keep it interesting for yourself. So yeah, just try and mess around with that intro section just to get used to those ideas and then we'll move on to the verse section.